Hello and welcome to Monster Mechanics, where we take creatures of myth and media and see how they can be improved. I am your host, Scott Paladin, and with me as always is the Athos to my Porthos, Zach Jaquez. Hey, how's it going? And with us as never before, the Taronga Leela to our Athos and Porthos, <laughs> Alice Kira. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> and today we are going to be talking about what's the best Cerberus. So I don't think we need a huge number of ground rules as to define what we mean by a Cerberus, but we're talking about what animal, if you added two additional heads to bring us up to a total of three, would be mm-hmm. fun and cool um, in reference to the uh, three-headed dog that guarded Hades in Greek myth. So the, uh, the big thing is you have to end up with three heads, so uh, we're, not, we're not adding an infinite number of heads. Um, mm. But uh, as Zach and I were talking a little bit before, I guess the... Uh, it, we're not going to define you as where where you have to put them. So if you have an interesting arrangement of heads, that will be totally cool too. Zach, why don't you start us off with with maybe a, a, a fun one that you had in mind? So just to be clear, we're, we're not going with the interpretation of uh, Cerberus that's also covered in snakes, right? No, no, he does not have the mane of snake. We're not adding manes of snakes to things. I mean, in a future episode, sure, but not today. All right. Okay. So uh, my, my idea for an animal was um, the box turtle. Because I kind of just love the idea of like three little heads just like poking out uh, one at a time. Yeah, that'd be fun. Would that? I guess it would have to be in addition to its legs. So it's got a a more like an eight hold arrangement instead of the usual six hold arrangement. So it's like kind of a um, like an octagon, I guess. (laughs) Octagonal. (laughs) Uh, Do they all come? Do you think they all come out at the front there, Zach, or maybe in the sides? Or I was I was thinking the the front just because that seems like I'm I'm just (laughs) picturing three turtle heads all fighting over a strawberry, and it's. It, it pleases okay. me. That is very cute. Yeah. Uh, what if they, flashing back to the old cartoons where they would always open up the turtle shell and there'd be an engine inside. Uh, <laughs> and I'm thinking like the, the little the little plates on the turtle shell popping open and heads popping out like a like little trap doors. Oh, kind of, kind of like a, a tiered kind of <laughs> yeah. three-headed turtle? Or maybe they could come out in different places depending on where it needs them. Hmm. <laughs> Now I'm picturing like three uh, tortoise shells stacked on top of each other and just like. <laughs> well, then we have the inevitable it's tortoises all the way down. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pulling some, some extra mythology there. Yeah, yeah. We'll just name them Yertle. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alice, what was on your mind for this idea? I actually thought about this a lot. And I think what I've settled on is a swan. Mm. Oh, yeah, because you have the extra heads and they have a lot of flexibility in their neck mm-hmm. so they can really move around and not get in each other's way, except when they get e- each other's way. And then they're like snapping and pecking at each other. Which is- Hang on, I have to untangle my swan servers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And I mean, swans can do a terrible amount of like damage. Those beaks are, are nasty. And like goose, they have teeth on their tongues, uh, mm-hmm. which is awful. That's just that's unnecessary, honestly. Yeah, the the ugly duckling story, I think, is actually more of one of transforming into a monster because swan uh, ducks are adorable and swans are horrible, hideous monsters. So that brings that whole (laughs) whole story into a new context. It's just a quiet day in a peaceful mythological village and you are a horrible three headed swan. (laughs) Just imagine like you like come upon a lake and there's a. You see the swan upturned. It's obviously like fishing down below and suddenly mm-hmm. it pops up and all three heads just rear up out of the water. <laughs> yeah. I'd like, run away so fast. Just the one head can go down at a time and the other two can keep the lookout. <laughs> oh, that's it. so gross. <laughs> Horrifying. Well, the So what did you have in mind, Scott? The original idea I have, I realize it doesn't work with only three heads, but it's the fractal gi- giraffe. Where fractal Okay. <laughs> okay. And the <laughs> It's a strange arrangement. It's the giraffe that has a, f- a regular head, you know, neck up to the head. And then where it's little horny things, which for the record are called ossicones, are Interesting. instead of those, it's got two little giraffe heads. And then each of each those, of those their heads. ossicones have two little <laughs> giraffe heads, <laughs> which is too good. At, I, I know I'm breaking the rules because it's got more than four, but that's so fun. Um, so I, I had to mention it. But the as I thought about that, what I what I eventually landed on was a chameleon. Hmm. And I don't I don't care where the three heads are, but the fact that it could like fire its tongue in like three directions at once just strikes me as super cool looking. OK, now I'm just picturing uh, the chameleon just Spider-Maning around the room. Mm. It's three tongues. Excellent. Excellent. 
Chameleons are also the ones that can shoot their blood out of their eyes. Oh, no, those are um, horned toads. Horned toads. Horned lizards, yeah. Horny toads or horned lizards. That's also an amazing image. (laughs) But six eyes to shoot blood out. (laughs) (laughs) In that case, I think, I mean, on a complete tangent, just giving one of those more eyes, not more heads, but more eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Popping them out in sequence. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's good. It just looks like one of those lawn sprinklers. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, we got to the body horror. Yep. <laughs> it didn't take us uh, but eight minutes. Uh, <laughs> so I had an idea for another one. And oh, yeah. Fire away. Mostly just to play on a a, a gimmick is a, a monkey where you can do the, the hear no evil, <laughs> see no evil, speak no evil. Mm. All at once on one animal. Yeah, with the with the monkey, especially for if we're not keeping the the same arrangement, for some reason I have like uh, in my head uh, and the image of the monkey, and it's got the normal head, and then it's got like a face in its chest and another one in its belly. That's horrifying. <laughs> There's a free monster idea for you. Okay, it's like a Gren Lagan situation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I have one little fun tidbit, which is um, while I was looking up uh, Kerberos or Cerberus in the past, I realized that there was his dad was a two headed dog. Which implies that if Cerberus has a kid, it's going to have four heads. Oh, <laughs> he's got That's a. Fun. Isn't he also uh, like the brother of the Hydra and a few other three-headed animals? Is that? I, I did a brief wiki search mm-hmm. before. Hmm, that doesn't that doesn't strike any um, memory for me. The only thing that the weird sibling situation that I can remember with Greek myth is that the Pegasus has a sibling that we know almost nothing about, but is often depicted as like a winged boar, if I remember correctly. It's just like Ooh. named as having also come out of the same situation that created the pe- I think the Pegasus sprung from Medusa's neck when the head yeah. was cut off. Interesting. And then also this other thing came out and they hardly ever describe it. <laughs> it's just like, oh yeah, that guy, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's fascinating. I do feel like a... A wing boar would be a much more interesting mount for all those, uh, uh, you know, MMOs and whatnot that curb off of the Pegasus. Oh yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Although, frankly, as as scary as wild boar are, I don't want them to have wings. Thank you. <laughs> like oh, God. those do. They breed so fast. Yeah, they breed. <laughs> you have to kill ninety percent of them a year in order for to maintain the population. Otherwise, they're gonna they're gonna be. Um, oh wow. Yeah. And they're omnivorous, which means they'll eat small animals and stuff, anything they can catch. Mm. And, oh, man, if I, I fell down a YouTube rabbit hole once where I w- like found a company that put up all of their like promotional material for killing boar, for killing wild boar for population control. And I don't know why. It's fascinating. <laughs> but they're like, Interesting. yeah, they are. They're smart, too. Um, so but they're mean. So I don't have any problem eating them. Um <laughs> A, pi- a pig would eat you. That's why you shouldn't feel bad about eating bacon. <laughs> well, I think that is um, that's a, those are some really good options for different Cerberuses. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to hear from our audience as well. If you guys have any ideas of hit us on our uh, Twitter account, which is at Monster M Pond. And uh, oh, if you want to catch Alice um, anywhere else in the Internet, Alice, go ahead and tell us where we can find you. Uh, sure. You can find me on Twitter at Magical Girl Kira. Mm-hmm. You can also find me on podcasts. Uh, yes. Mostly on Unlabeled AP, which is a Masks actual play, and Outstanding, which is another Masks actual play, which is part of the Protean City Comics line, which I'm also part of outside of Outstanding. <laughs> yeah, I, if I recall, you're on a quest to be on every Masks AP in existence, right? I'm trying for it. <laughs> well, uh, best of luck to you there. Thanks. I'm doing pretty well so far. <laughs> Seems like you got most of your bases covered. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, on that note, um, catch us again next week. It will be our episode on brownies. All right. Ooh, Alice, it was a pleasure meeting you. <laughs> it was fun meeting you too. Thanks. Thank you for listening to this Monster Mechanics mini episode. Instead of the normal call to action, I'm going to ask you guys to go check out the unlabeled AP or to go check out a couple of episodes of Outstanding, where you can find both myself and Alice doing tween superhero shenanigans. Now for the credits. Monster Mechanics is produced and edited by me, Scott Paladin, and hosted by myself and my best friend, Zach Jaquez. Our special guest this week was Alice Kira. All of the ideas generated during this podcast are released under a do-what-the-f-you-want public license.